high fusion power plant designs, a powerful current will flow over the conducting spheres. Again, a very powerful current. These powerful currents create tremendous crushing forces. This force crushes the spheres. Notice how there are conducting spheres all around the track. Again, they form a ring shaped much like a pearl necklace. Every sphere has a current flowing over it. This current can be aligned in a primary or secondary fashion. Every sphere has a magnetic field flowing over it. This field can be aligned in a primary or secondary fashion. Every sphere experiences this crushing force. This force points to the center of every sphere. There's no doubt about this crushing force. This is something that is very well understood. Two major fields of scientific research have studied this force in great detail. The first field of study is called high magnetic field research. In this field of study, they make the world's most powerful magnets. They construct very powerful electromagnetic coils. Using these coils, they induce very powerful magnetic fields. Then, they use these powerful magnetic fields in a wide variety of experiments. In the news, you may have seen the experiment where they levitate a frog. The technicians that make these powerful coils have developed a wide variety of construction techniques that make the coils structurally very strong. This strength is critical. This strength prevents the powerful coils from imploding themselves. Again, the center pointing force tries to crush the coils. The second field of study evolved at Sandia National Laboratory. They developed a famous fusion device called the Z-Pinch. The Z-Pinch gets its name from its geometry. In my designs, the plasma is compressed spherically in all directions, X, Y, and Z. If you'd like, you can think of my fusion power plant designs as spherical pinches or XYZ pinches. In a Z pinch, they try to compress the plasma in just one direction, in the Z coordinate. Essentially, this is a cylindrical geometry. First, they start with a cylindrical array of wires. Then, they charge a powerful capacitor bank. Then, the energy from the capacitors is suddenly dumped through the cylindrical cage of wires. The wires vaporize, forming a plasma. The powerful current induces a powerful magnetic field around the plasma. All three key fields exist. There's an electric field, there's a magnetic field. The cross product points to the center of the implosion. Remember, this cross product, this field, can be described using the pointing vector or with my grand unification equation. A powerful crushing force is created and the plasma implodes violently. In a Z-pinch, a fusion fuel is placed inside the imploding plasma. The implosion compresses and ignites the fusion fuel. Sandia National Labs operated their Z-pinch for many years. I could talk for hours about Sandia's Z-pinch experiments. I thought they were truly fantastic. If you would like to understand my fusion power plant designs, then if you can, you really should try to study Sandia's Z-Pinch. The Sandia scientists have proved, without a doubt, many of the most important aspects of my fusion power plant designs. First, they proved without a doubt that when a powerful magnetic field forms around a plasma, the plasma will implode with a tremendous crushing force. They proved these implosions can ignite fusion reactions. Unfortunately, their device was a Z-pinch, not a spherical pinch. When I was young, I spent a lot of time thinking about Z-pinches. At times, I wished I was the director in charge of Sandia's Z-pinch. At one point, about 20 years ago, I realized when the plasma implodes in a Z-pinch, it might naturally want to form a spherical wave and implode spherically. In my mind, I made a prediction. I bet Sandia's Z-Pinch probably does not implode symmetrically. I was very curious about this, but had no way to find out if I was right or not. I knew that spherical waves can naturally form and that a magnetic field in a spherical wave can curl in the opposite direction. Keep in mind, Z-Pinch researchers would naturally assume because the cylindrical cage of wires is extremely symmetrical, the plasma should implode symmetrically. 
they would have no reason to expect a non-symmetrical result. At the time, I was unaware their experiments were indeed showing this. Their plasma was not imploding symmetrically. At a nuclear conference, by some bizarrely lucky coincidence, I had dinner with someone that actually worked on Sandia's Z-Pinch device. This person was one of their central scientists. This person had key inside knowledge. When I discovered this, I was shocked, but I kept my cool. This was an opportunity I could not let slip by. I was way too curious. I just had to find out if my prediction was right or not. So by asking this person precise leading questions, I got my answer. At the key moment, this person was utterly flabbergasted by my precise questions and seemingly inside knowledge. The secret was revealed. I found out that my prediction was correct. The two ends of the plasma did not implode symmetrically. I even found out that the researchers did not want to publish this fact because they could not explain it. There are few moments in life like that one. Using their Z-Pinch device, they try to compress their plasmas cylindrically. Apparently, no matter what they tried, nature did what it wanted. The plasma naturally wanted to implode spherically. It seems spherical waves naturally want to form. I realize I am sidetracked. However, this detail has important implications for everyone in the world. Because we are talking about science, at first, this might seem odd. This involves emotions. Over the years, our national labs have done extremely impressive science. The same can be said of scientific research programs at universities. However, this story clearly illustrates the biggest problem with doing research at national labs and universities. It has to do with money, with funding. The national labs and university research programs live and die on funding. Every year they must get funding. Most scientists greatly desire to make a breakthrough in science. However, over time, a stronger de desire develops. That is the desire to keep their prestigious positions for the rest of their lives. To make this desire a reality, they must get someone else to pay for their research. Keep in mind, they each have their territories. To ensure funding, they must make their territory appear important. Many scientists guard their territories like ferocious pit bulls. Yes, these scientists have beautiful minds. So it is easy to imagine they just have extremely advanced logical cognitive thoughts. However, they are not immune to the base emotions. Emotions affect them too. They are emotionally invested in their programs. For example, the fusion researchers that study magnetic confinement feel their area is best. The researchers studying Z pinches feel they are the ones on the right track. Fusion scientists studying inertial confinement are emotionally certain their territory is best. You can feel this emotion in the scientific articles they write. Over the years, I've read many articles on fusion research. They are not simple, straightforward examples of cognitive logic. The author of each article included something that stressed how their line of research was superior or more important in some way. Each territory must be funded and defended. Never forget, they are people. This has an important implication for the world. Science is influenced dramatically by emotions. If my physics is correct, then each group of fusion researchers has been right and wrong. If only, if only they had worked together instead of defending their territory, then the world might have had fusion energy 20 or 30 years ago. My fusion power plant designs combine the best ideas from each of the three fields. I use inertial confinement. I use magnetic confinement. I use Z-pinch confinement and MHD. All are combined in my designs. 
Luckily, I solved the mystery of time. Luckily, I was able to understand the importance of the pointing vector and use this to unify physics. Luckily, I became fascinated by fusion at an early age. All of this gave me an advantage. This allowed me to see the big picture and understand what the fusion researchers had missed. Now, I need to get back on topic. Because powerful currents flow over each of the spheres of my fusion power plant designs, they will experience powerful crushing forces. Each sphere will want to implode. There's no doubt about this. Sandy has proven this with the Z-Pinch. In my fusion power plant designs, most of the spheres are filled with some kind of material that resists these crushing forces. This is a graphic from a patent application showing the manufacture of a conducting sphere. The inner material helps to prevent the conducting spheres from being crushed. As an example, this material might be highly compacted carbon black or maybe some kind of ceramic, like a castable ceramic. Again, if these spheres are filled with a material, then this material will resist the crushing forces. However, on purpose, not all of the spheres are filled with such a material. In each power plant, at least one of the spheres is hollow. This sphere is filled with a hot plasma made of fusion fuel. This sphere is the core of the power plant. Some of the designs have multiple cores. My favorite design has two cores. Spherical cores are like cylinders in an internal combustion engine. Just like an internal combustion engine can have more than one cylinder, it is feasible for these fusion power plants to have more than one core. While the inner material might help prevent the solid conducting spheres from being crushed, there's nothing like that to prevent the plasma from being crushed. Therefore, just like in a Z-pinch, the hot plasma is compressed by the powerful crushing forces. The difference is, in my designs, this force compresses in a spherical fashion. Think about the plasma in the core. It is hottest at its center. Further out, it is cooler. In essence, surrounding the hot plasma is a spherical field that has been made ahead of time. This one field has parts that are electric, magnetic, and gravitational. This field contains and confines the hot plasma. Therefore, I call it the confinement field. This field can compress the hot plasma. This field can add energy to the hot plasma. And equally important, it can also absorb energy from the plasma. This happens when the plasma is expanding. Because of its electromagnetic nature, this spherical field can change its shape and strength at the speed of light. Best of all, once it is made, this confinement field doesn't need to be told what to do. It will change its shape and strength as needed all on its own. Mm -hmm.